So, norepinephrine is both a neurotransmitter and a hormone used by the brain and throughout the body. When the body is exposed to cold temperatures, the release of norepinephrine is increased, which causes a vasoconstriction throughout the body in order to conserve heat. However, as well as protecting the body from the cold, norepinephrine is positively associated with focus, attention, anxiety, depression and general mood state, so much so that it is pharmacologically targeted when treating depression. Serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, commonly known as SNRIs, are frequently prescribed antidepressants in the UK. They work by preventing the reuptake of norepinephrine, allowing increased levels to be present in the brain. Interestingly, research has shown that subjects who were submerged in cold water at 4.4 degrees Celsius for just 20 seconds displayed increased levels of norepinephrine by 2 to 300%. Considering the effects norepinephrine can have on the mental state, I would consider this a valuable asset of cold water exposure. Now, I'm not stating that this evidence alone provides a case for treating depression, but what I would say is that people struggling with depression may want to consider this as an alternative route from conventional medicine, such as um, medication, for example, that can be associated with a magnitude of side effects. So the second physiological response from the body to cold water is an increased production of the cold shock protein known as RNA binding motif 3, abbreviated as RBM3. In a study in which mice were genetically modified to have Alzheimer's disease, it was shown that exposing these mice to cold temperatures was shown to raise the presence of this cold shock protein in their bodies. Interestingly, the heightened levels of this protein induced through cooling was shown to delay the onset of the Alzheimer's, highlighting the neuroprotective characteristics of this protein. The evidence from the study went on to conclude that the RBM3 protein was linked with synapse regeneration, preventing neuronal loss and prolonging the survival of the mice. Giovanni Melucci from the Cambridge University went on to conduct a study on humans to see if humans do in fact possess the same protein as the mice. Uh, and in this study she found that humans do in fact possess this same protein and that it is markedly elevated when exposed to cold temperatures. So the research is still ongoing into the full effectiveness the RBM3 protein can have on mitigating against diseases such as Alzheimer's but the initial signs appear to be very promising. Exposing yourself to cold water may be something you consider as a protective measure from the onset of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's.